So far we have discussed various properties of asymptotic notations. We discussed the general property, the reflexive property and the symmetric property of asymptotic notations. Now we will discuss the transpose symmetric property of asymptotic notations. So let's get started and let's see the topics. The topic of this lecture is asymptotic notations transpose symmetric property. We will discuss the transpose symmetric property of asymptotic notations in this lecture. Let's first see the property and let's try to understand it properly. Here is the property. If fn is big O of gn, then gn is big omega of fn. What does this property mean? fn is big O of gn means gn grows asymptotically bigger than fn. This is the meaning of big O notation. We know if fn is big O of gn, this means gn grows asymptotically bigger than fn or gn is the upper bound of fn. If gn is the upper bound of fn or if we are saying that gn grows asymptotically bigger than fn, then it is clear that fn will grow asymptotically lesser than gn. Or in other words, we can say gn is big omega of fn. If you are saying gn is big omega of fn, this means fn will grow asymptotically lesser than gn. So, this is the meaning of the transpose symmetric property. If fn is big O of gn, then gn is big omega of fn. And from this graph also, it is clear why the transpose symmetric property is true. As we can observe after n naught, gn grows asymptotically bigger than fn. So clearly, gn is the upper bound of fn or we can say fn is big O of gn. But we can also say that gn is big omega of fn because fn grows asymptotically lesser than gn. That is why we can say gn is big omega of fn. So both these equalities are satisfied if fn is big O of gn, then gn is big omega of fn. From the graph, it is clear. Graphically, it is making sense that this property is true. But let's try to prove this mathematically as well. For the mathematical proof, we will take a simple example. So let's take an example. Let fn is n square and gn is n cube. Let's say these are the functions fn and gn. fn is n square and gn is n cube. Can we say fn is big O of gn? Can we say gn? grows asymptotically bigger than fn? Let's apply the definition of big O notation to identify whether this statement is true or not. Here is the definition. fn is big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c times gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. Here we have this inequality, fn less than or equal to c times gn. If this inequality is satisfied, then we can say fn is big O of gn. Now let's try to satisfy this inequality so that we can show that fn is big O of gn. What is fn? fn is n square. What is gn? gn is n cube. We can replace fn by n square and gn by n cube here. But what about c? Let's assume some constant c. Let's say c is equal to 1. Then the inequality will be n square less than or equal to n cube. Can we say this inequality is true? Yes, n square is less than n cube for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, n square is less than or equal to n cube. This inequality is true. And hence we can say fn is big O of gn. We can observe that n square is big O of n cube because the growth rate of n cube after some n naught is greater than the growth rate of n square. So clearly n cube is the upper bound of n square. Hence we can say fn is big O of gn or n square is big O of n cube. Now we know this equality is satisfied. Let's try to prove this equality. Can we say gn is big omega of fn? According to this property, if we are saying that fn is big O of gn, then gn is also big omega of fn. Now let's try to show this. We need to take the same functions, but this time we need to check 
whether gn is big omega of fn or not for this we will now apply the big omega definition here is the definition of the big omega notation according to the definition of big omega notation fn is big omega of gn if and only if fn is greater than or equal to c times gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n not and c and n not are constants here we can observe the inequality is fn greater than or equal to c times gn in place of less than or equal to we now have greater than or equal to this definition is applicable for fn equal to big omega of gn but we need to prove whether gn is big omega of fn or not for this we will replace fn by gn and gn by fn everywhere in this definition after replacement we will get this definition gn is big omega of fn if and only if gn is greater than or equal to c times fn for all values of n greater than or equal to n not where c and n not are constants now we have this inequality gn greater than or equal to c times fn we know gn is n cube so we can replace gn by n cube we know fn is n square so we can replace fn by n square now what about c let us assume that c is equal to 1 so the inequality becomes n cube greater than or equal to n square can we say n cube is greater than n square yes we know n square is less than n cube from the last discussion n square is less than n cube and hence we can say n square is big o of n cube if n square is less than n cube then it is clear that n cube is greater than n square or in other words we can say n cube is big omega of n square this inequality is true and hence we can say gn is big omega of fn or we can say n cube is big omega of n square so from this example it is clear that the transpose symmetric property is true if fn is big o of gn then gn is big omega of fn so i hope this example is clear and i hope it is clear why the transpose symmetric property is true so with this we are done with this topic and this means we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one